walking stick. He don't need no ball and chain. If he ain't got no hand to kick, that don't mean nothing to James. Oh, James singing. Oh, James. The people in the street, oh, the pouring of the rain. Is it a feeling in the heart or is it something in you? Kathy from the Huron Foundation in Chicago. The scholarship. Does it mean she's going to Africa? No, I don't know. I can't tell. Open it. No, wait. It, it's Kathy's letter. We can't just go opening her mail. That's an invasion of privacy. James, why don't you go call Kathy and ask her if she'd mind? If she's in there, we can always steam it open. I'll get it. Hello? Uh, hello? Yes. Uh, may I speak to Kathy, please? Uh, who's calling? It's her brother, James. It's her brother. What'll I say? Say she's in the shower. I said that a couple of days ago when he called. Well, another day, another shower. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Kathy's in the shower. Again? That's where she was the last time I called. Well, it's not uncommon for people to take more than one shower a week. Some even make it a daily habit. Okay, well, listen. Tell her to call home as soon as she gets out. It's important. It's an emergency. Okay. All right. Kathy's in the shower. I say we open it. We can't. It's not to us. It's to her. Well, that really is just a technicality, did not you say? Africa. Why couldn't she got a grant to study ecology in Arizona? Let's face it, both of you guys would rather she went to Cape Cod. Well, she might as well be in Africa for all we've seen over in the last few weeks. Kathy's a college student now, with responsibilities. Life of her own. She's a young woman. I know that. But to me, she is still the little girl who loved the taffeta party dress I bought for her when she was ten years old, even though her mother thought it was outlandish. Just a bit overly frilly. Taffeta party dress? Yuck. That was before little girls were liberated into blue jeans for every occasion. That roommate of Kathy sounded kind of weird. I hope she gives her the message. I'm oh, sure she will, James. As a matter of fact, I expect that Kathy will call at any minute now, and when she does, she will probably want the news immediately. Well, then why don't you open it so we don't have to keep her in suspense? Good thinking! I'm sure that's exactly what Kathy would want us to do. Hurry, right, Claire. Hurry, right, Fester. Uh. Oh. What? Letters to notify you the board has granted you the scholarship. She got it. All right, Kathy. Maybe we could all move to Africa. Kathy. Hello, Kathy. I, I, Kathy. Yeah, guess what? Um, you got it, Kathy. The scholarship. Yeah, you got it. The letter just came. Oh, wait, what? Wait, you're all talking at once. I can't hear you. Yeah, we're all really thrilled for you, darling. I mean, we hate to think of losing your front all that time, but... Your father's over-emotional. We know that we're not losing you. We just have to learn to accept it. Yeah. It's James, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna miss you something awful. But I'm glad you got what you wanted. Thanks, James. I'll, I'll miss you, too. I mean, if I go... I mean... Oscar Winchie's coming home. Uh, hey, Kath, are you okay? I, I guess you're all excited, huh? But happy? I'm all mixed up. I'm miserable. I... Listen, James, don't tell anyone. Just say that I'm all excited and um, I'll call back when I calm down. Okay, sure. Hey, hey, listen, I'll grab a bus and come out and see you. It'll, it'll take about an hour. Thanks, James. Um, listen, meet me outside the dorm across the street. Okay. Uh, listen, I'll be there about 12. Uh, sure, Kath, we understand. Uh, I'll see you when I get there. Bye. Bye. James. Hi, Kathy. Mm. Good to see you. I'm really glad you came. 
Are you kidding? All the times you came to help me, or even just to listen? I'm just glad you wanted me to come. Just like old times. Only usually I'm the big, brave, wise, older sister. Now I feel like a confused kid. Don't you want to go to Africa now, Kathy? I do, but I don't. Are you scared? Is that it? Uh, afraid of going off into deepest Africa? Well, I would be too. No, I, I'm not afraid, James. I'm in love. James, for the first time in my life, I know what it feels like to love someone and have them love me back. Hey, that's great. Uh, who, who's a lucky guy? His name is Jed Lawrence. Did you, did you meet him here at school? In history class. Is he a freshman, too? No, he's not a student. What was he doing in history class? He teaches the course. Oh, James, he's so brilliant. He just makes everything come alive. You're in love with your professor? Well, he's a person, too. I, I don't get it. It isn't a crush? I mean... He must be a lot older than you. He's only 30. And in less than a year, I'll be 20. So you gonna get married? Maybe someday. But right now, I'm just starting college and all. I can't make plans like that. Oh, so you're just dating the guy, is that it? It's more than just dating, James. We're in love. And we're mature people. Oh. Well, that's what you were doing when they said you were in the shower. You must be ashamed. Making your roommate's lie for you. Well, there's nothing to be ashamed about being in love and having someone love you back. It's not like you, Kathy. It, it, it sounds sneaky to me. I mean, you're the great, pure, and honest person with everything out front. Now you're cheating and lying about your life. You're, you're messing around with some dirty old man. Don't say those things to me. And don't talk like that about someone you don't even know. Kathy, Judd is a sensitive man. A brilliant historian, and I love him very much. Sure. I bet he's a brilliant historian, all right. I'll bet something else. I'll bet you get an A in history. I'll see you around sometime. James. disappointed turning against your older sister like this. And she's the one who turned against me. I'm the one who's disappointed. He's supposed to be your brother. Brother, I mean, the tone he playing sounds more like the jealous lover. Don't be funny, man. Sly's right. What's emerging here is a deep sibling fixation fantasy. Oh, you guys are crazy. You would feel the same way if your sister suddenly changed your whole attitude and personality. Well, are you saying the capacity to love was not formally part of your sister's personality? That's a sad case. She's changed for the better. I'm saying she wouldn't have been so sneaky about it before. This weird professor guy must have her under his spell. I mean, she wouldn't be acting like this. Later whammy on her, huh? What is the man, uh, professor of voodoo and man biology? Obvious, James hasn't even met him. No. Well, what do I want to meet him for? Well, if he is the evil genius you imagine, you owe it to your sister to help her out of a terrible scene. And if he's nice, you owe her an apology. In other words, be a man, man. And go check out the dude. Kathy here? Kathy? Yeah, Kathy Hunter. She does live here, doesn't she? Oh, who are you? 
Her brother, James. Oh. Uh, what is it exactly you want? Uh, I told you. My sister. Here, let me in here. Uh, Kathy? Ka Kathy? Kathy? That's Sue. Kathy's not here. Okay. You might as well come clean. I know she's not in the shower, so don't pull that on me. Just tell me how to find this guy Judd's apartment. Whose apartment? If you just don't tell me how to get there, plain and simple, I'm gonna... I'm gonna throw all your stuff out the window. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. For heaven's sakes, just calm down. Yes. Uh... I'm James Hunter, uh, Kathy's brother. James? This is a surprise. And a pleasure. Come in, come in. I know it's an old cliche, but I really have heard a lot about you, and I wanted to meet you. Where is she? Kathy. Don't play dumb. Just tell me where she is. At the grocery. Oh. Would you like to take your coat off and stay a while? I have to admit, one of my reasons for wanting to meet you is purely self-serving. I hear you're a terrific photographer, and I was wondering if you might take some photographs of Kathy and me. We don't have any of the two of us. Of course, I'll pay you a professional fee. No, I don't take bribes. Bribes? James, I think we ought to have a serious talk, man to man. Okay, mister. Let's hear what you've got to say for yourself. What about you, James? You ever been in love? Yeah. This girl, Lacey, back where I lived in Oregon. Lacey, what was she like? She wasn't really my type. I mean, blonde, cheerleader type, you know, big blue eyes, a smile. I know, all right. That's my type. Well, Kathy's not like that at all. I know. Kathy's not my type at all, but here I am in love with her. It doesn't make much sense. Did it make much sense when you were in love? No. I just was. And I just am, with Kathy. James, I'm leveling with you. I've never gone out with one of my students. I've never even dated anybody much younger than me. I've even put down guys who did. Well, then what about Kathy? What happened? She just walked in the room. Oh. Well, that's something. I mean, th that you really love her. Because I do, too. I mean, not the way you do, but not just because she's my sister, either. She's one of my favorite persons. I know. And you're very special to her, too, James. It would mean a lot to her if you could give her the benefit of the doubt. You know? About me and her. Yeah. I guess I was kind of unfair to her the last time I saw her. She understands. But maybe if you could, uh... Help! James! What are you doing here? James Hunter always tracks down his man. Or woman. James and I have been having a very good talk. That's wonderful. Well, is that all your stuff, too? No, all of it, I'm afraid. You've got enough to last till summer. No, just for the week. Would you believe it? That's what I like, organization. You eat here every night? Oh, well, you know the old saying, James. Two can eat cheaper than one. Excuse me a sec. I'm going to get out of this grungy sweatshirt. Can you stay for dinner, James? Chili. Uh, no, I'm not real hungry. Oh, Kathy makes the greatest... Yeah, I know. Have you seen my crew neck, Judd? You wore it last Friday. That's the last I remember. So, you on for dinner? You live here, don't you? What do you mean? I mean, you live here in Judd's apartment with Judd. Well, I'm here a lot of the time, but I still officially live in the dorm. Officially, but not really. Really, you and Judd live here together. 
It's the same as if you were married, but you aren't married. Are you going to get married? James, I told you before. How can I get married? How can I make a big decision right now? You decided to live with Judd, didn't you? Isn't that a big decision? Yes, it's a big decision. James, please, try to understand that I'm doing what I feel is right. Well, if you feel it's right, how come you haven't told Mom and Dad? I put it off because I'm afraid they won't understand. Just like you don't seem to understand. Well, what does it matter what I think? James, what you think has always mattered to me. It's very important to me. Yeah, well, I guess it used to be. But now you've got a whole new life, and I'm out of it. No, James. You're part of whatever life I have. James, we want you to feel welcome here. Yeah, well, right now I just feel out of place. I guess I'll be going. James. Even if you're mad or hurt or disappointed, can I ask you one favor? What? Don't tell Mom and Dad about me and Judd until I get a chance to tell them myself in person. We always kept each other's secrets, Kath. We never did snitch on each other. Thanks, James. I'll come home soon to see the folks. And you. James, I hope we can be friends someday. Yeah, well, everything seems different right now. I guess I'm confused. Hey, Sly, uh, you wouldn't happen to have any relatives that are living with someone they're not married to, would you? You mean living in sin? You mean cohabitation? There you go again, Marlene, always trying to replace sin with science. You mean you don't think it's a sin, Marlene? Well, I'm not qualified to say if cohabitation is a sin. But I can inform you it's a crime in 20 states of the Union. What? You mean you could go to jail for that? Well, penalties for conviction range as high as uh, a three-year jail sentence in Arizona and Massachusetts. Kathy could go to jail. Oh, well... Such laws are rarely enforced when the practice becomes widespread in society. Kathy, huh? Sorry what I just said, man. Uh, when it's your own kin, it's not living in sin. Well, lots of people, including the president, agree with Sly that the practice is living in sin. But the number of unmarried people living together increased about, I think, 800% during the 1960s. Who says? Dr. Paul Sieglick of the Population Division of the Census Bureau. You seem awfully uptight about this, James. That's unusual. Studies show that people of our generation are much more casual about these matters. Yeah, but studies don't show that it's your sister. Oh, Dad, you're home. Hi, James. Yeah. Uh, uh, since you're home, uh, if you both have a minute, there's something I'd like to talk to you about, uh, a school assignment. Higher mathematics, James. I'm afraid you've come to the wrong people. Oh, no, no. It's, uh, it's more to do with social studies. See, uh, we're getting into changes in family living habits and stuff like that. Oh, is this going to be an interview? Oh, no. I, I just want to put down a few of your general opinions so I won't forget. Opinions about what? Oh, for instance, what do you think about people living together who aren't married? Hmm. Well, I think that's a matter of individual choice. Don't you? I mean, if the people are old enough and they're mature and responsible, then I don't think their living arrangements are anybody else's business but their own, James. But now remember, James, your father said that they're responsible and mature and of age. That doesn't mean some 15-year-old who runs away and gets pregnant or into dope or stuff. Okay, but what if the person is over 18, they can drive, drink, and vote, they're educated, they do the work they're supposed to, and while well, they're in love with someone who loves them back? What's the question? Well, why shouldn't they get married instead of just living together? Well, different people have different reasons. I have a friend who's divorced, and he lives with a lady who's divorced. Now, marriage didn't work for them the first time around, and they don't want to risk it again. Yeah, but they're old and sort of worn out from trying. Well, what about young people? Well, lots of young people have gone through divorce with their parents. 
It's frightening them. They don't want to make the same mistake. They're cautious. That's the way some of my graduate students feel. They want to make sure that their relationship works before they commit themselves to marriage. And I must say, I have to respect their right to live their life as, as they see fit. Huh. So you both feel people should both sort of live and let live, is that it? Well, I mean, that's an oversimplification of a complicated subject, but well, I guess that'll do. But you see, James, your father and I are in favor of marriage because it's allowed us to make a beautiful commitment to each other that we wouldn't be able to if we were just living together. But other people who believe in living a different way of life have that right. Okay. Thanks a lot, folks. I think I was really kind of prejudiced before. I see how I should have more of an open mind. You're not thinking about getting married, are you, James? Well, I certainly hope not. I mean, all this stuff that you've been asking us about, that's just for social studies class, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, right, well, you see, because I might have to uh, debate about it in class tomorrow, and I just wanted to make sure I'd be prepared to argue either side. Well, now, who's going to volunteer to set the table? I have a dinner that's practically ready. I volunteer if I'm invited to dinner. Kathy. Uh, oh, Kathy. Kathy. Hi, honey. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have so many things to tell you. Things I should have told you before. Terrific. Hang up your coat, come help me make the salad, and we'll talk. Uh, well, let me help you with your coat. I missed you, James. I hope you're still not mad at me. No, I was just being narrow-minded. And listen, you won't have to worry about telling everything to the folks. You'll be surprised how they'll really understand. Kathy, don't you have to start making arrangements for something as big as going to Africa? I've given them a lot of thought. I'm sure it takes more than a lot of thought, dear. Have you uh, cleared it with the dean? I've cleared it with everyone. I'm sorry it took me so long to tell you, but I wanted to be sure. Sure of what? That I'm not going to Africa this year. I've postponed the grant. Yeah, and, and she won't be a million miles away. You postponed it. Well, that, I mean, I mean, if that's your decision, I'm sure it's the right one. But what made you change your mind? I mean, you wanted to go so badly. Uh, well, my condition is different from what it was when I applied. Your condition? Are you pregnant? Uh, no, no, I'm in love. For real? Very real. Oh, I think that's wonderful. I'm so happy for you. Well, me too, Kathy. I, I mean. I, Oh, I don't know what to say. I'm so surprised. Well, everything's happening at once. Come on, everybody. Let's see. Well, Kathy, tell me, who's the lucky guy? His name is Jed Lawrence. Well, he's a swell guy, Dad. How do you know? Have you met him? Yeah. Why didn't you tell us, James? Well, I had promised. I'm sorry. I asked him not to tell you both so I could tell you myself. Well, is there any reason that he shouldn't have told us? There's nothing wrong, I hope. Is he black? No. No, that wouldn't have made any difference, Sandy. Well, then, I hope it doesn't matter that he's 30 years old and my history teacher. Oh. He's 30 years old and a faculty member. That's great. Oh, well, you'd never guess it, Dad. I mean, he looks like a regular young guy. Well, you might as well tell me the whole thing now, Kathy. I'm ready for anything at this point. Is he married? Of course not. Divorced? No, he's not divorced because he's never been married. He's 30 years old and he's never been married. That's... What's wrong with that? He just hasn't chosen to get married yet. Nothing more to it than that, huh? More what? Um, I think we'll finish this discussion after supper. After I go to bed. So you can accuse Kathy's boyfriend of being a homosexual. We're not accusing Kathy's boyfriend of anything, Sandy. We're not discussing Kathy's boyfriend. We're changing the subject. Right. Don't worry, Kathy. I'll stick by you and your boyfriend no matter what his tendencies are. Sandy? Shut up and pass the salt. Can we talk about football? Pass the salt.
First of all, I want to apologize for putting off telling you about it. And to you especially, James, for making you keep a secret. Well, that's all right, Kath. You always kept my secrets. What's the secret, Kathy? Well, it's really very simple. I'm in love with Judd and I'm living with him. What do you mean you're living with him? I mean, I live in his apartment and share his bed. That's great. A faculty member has seduced you into living with him. That's just great. I'm not some poor little waif who can be seduced. I'm a responsible, intelligent 19-year-old woman. I don't want to sound like a fool, but to me, you are still my little girl. Dad, I love you both, just like I always have. But the little girl is gone. Paul, don't you understand that Kathy is a grown woman who does whatever she wants, with whomever she wants, whenever she no doubt wants to? Mother. I don't suppose that you and your friend have thought about anything as old-fashioned as getting married. Of course we have. He asked me and I said no. Why? We thought you said that you loved him. I do. But I'm not ready for a lifetime decision yet. Now, let me get this straight. You're old enough to live with the man but you're too young to get married, is that right? Right. Dad, I'm just not ready for marriage yet. In the meantime, I'm a healthy adult. Would you rather I suppress those feelings and remain a virgin until I was 25 or so? Well, I'd rather my daughter weren't living with one of her professors. But Dad, you said you and Mom both believe a, a mature, responsible woman can make their own choice about whether to live with a guy or to marry him. That's what all that questioning was about. You were just trying to find out for Kathy how we'd feel about what she's doing. Isn't that right, James? No. Dad, honest, I was trying to find out for myself. So I could understand. Well, if we'd known that you were asking about Kathy, we would have answered differently. That's right, James. We were talking about people in general. And Kathy's not people in general? No, she's our daughter. Who is people in general? Everybody else. Why, shouldn't you be as understanding about Kathy as you are about everyone else? Huh? Thanks, James. But it's no use. You were wrong. They don't seem to understand. I'm sorry if I disgraced you all. It's late. I've got to get back to school. Listen. Kathy. Yeah. What's he like? Kathy's Judd. Oh, he's a great guy, Ma. Really? I mean, he's nice looking, he's handsome, and, and well, he's really swell for Kathy. He really loves her. How nice for her. Don't you want her to be happy, Ma? Well, I wasn't. Not when I was her age, anyway. In college? God, I thought you were real popular. I mean, in all those yearbook pictures, you're pretty and smiling. You look like you're having a good time. Is that just a put on? No, I had a good time in college. It's just that I wasn't <clears throat> happy the way that Kathy's happy with Judd. Oh. When I was in college, most girls believed that it was better for you to wait until you got married. I was one of them. Well, uh, what about Dad? Was he happy before you started going together? Well, I'm quite sure he was on a few occasions. I mean, it was um, much more accepted then for men to <clears throat> get happy before they got married. Well, are you sorry now that you didn't get happy before you got married? No, not really. I mean, everything was a lot easier then because there were whole rules of conduct. Right, wrong. I wouldn't have enjoyed doing something that I, I thought was wrong. Of course, Kathy doesn't think that what she's doing is wrong because she thinks that being in love makes it all right. Yeah. No, she wouldn't be happy being happy if she thought it was wrong. I mean, it makes everything very easy for her, doesn't it? That's why you're mad at her. Because, because she's got it so good. Me? Jealous of my own daughter because she's 19 and beautiful? Smart and in love? The whole world's an oyster. I mean, she can go wherever she wants to go. She's going to go to Africa for a year, but if that doesn't work out, she'll go to South America or the Greek islands. 
Well, I stand here washing dishes, telling my teenage son what a relic his mother is because she was innocent when she got married and stayed faithful to one man for most of her life and no doubt beyond. Gee, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know that was in me. I guess I just had to get it out. Anyway, I uh, feel pounds lighter. Mom, I'm glad you were innocent and faithful. Well, I'm glad I'm me too. And now Kathy will just have to find out who she is. I sure wasn't any help to her the way I was going. Well, how will you help her? Well, I can start by apologizing for being such a witch tonight. Maybe I'll uh, see if she'd like to bring Jed for dinner. Of course, I have to ask your father, see if he agrees. But I'll talk to him. Maybe I should, too. I mean, for Kathy. Uh, at least I'd like to try. I was in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd drop by. Hi, James. How you doing? That's very casual. What's on your mind? Kathy? Well, that's something we have in common. Can't you forgive her, Dad? Not just a question of forgiveness, James. Well, then what is it? I'm worried about the consequences of what she's doing. Suppose the thing with Judd doesn't work out. And they break up and she goes and lives with somebody else. And then they break up and, I mean, it's just too easy to walk out. You're not married. You mean, what if Kathy sort of goes from one guy to another? Yes. Now, what do you think that's going to do to a sensitive young person? Make them tough or cynical or... I don't know, James, but I'd sure hate to see it happen to Kathy. Is that what you're worried about? There's a lot more to it than that. But I don't even know how to explain it because it involves my feelings. Like what? Well, like the kind of feelings that a father has for a daughter. Feelings of tenderness. Desire to protect her because she's fragile and delicate. I mean, this may all sound very old-fashioned to you, but to me it's very important, James. It's very special. It's a very deep urge to try and keep her from harm. You think Jed is going to harm her? Oh, I don't know. I don't even know the guy. But he is living on very intimate terms with my daughter. I suppose I would feel upset with anybody in that situation. Who in the Sam Hill does he think he is dragging my daughter off to his apartment and setting up housekeeping? And then if something doesn't work out, why, he just throws her in the street and goes and gets himself another young beauty from one of his classes. Yeah, but Dad, Jed didn't force Kathy to do anything. She did it because she wanted to. They're both doing what they want to, and that's what you said people should do. Live the way they want to. That's what I said, James, and that is what I believe in. But uh, I don't have that same calm, objective attitude when it comes to my own daughter, you see. And I'm sorry I don't. I'm very upset by all this. Okay, I guess you can't help the way you feel. Well, then I can sure try. I mean, it may take me a while, but it's something I intend to work on. And are you going to let Mom invite Judd and Kathy over for dinner? Yes. And I will try and behave like a nice, wise old professor instead of an outraged father. Well, I guess that's all you can do is try. Oh, you better run along, James. I have work to do. Yeah, okay. I'll see you, Dad. It was nice of you to have us to dinner, Mrs. Hunter. Bob, we were delighted. You know, it worked out perfectly. We're going camping tomorrow at Mount Monadnock, and this was right on the way. Wow, I'm glad we're conveniently located. Pa, huh? That's just a little joke. Can anyone take a joke? Well, certainly, sir. So you're uh, um, going mountain climbing? Uh, not the kind with ropes. Uh, it's kind of like hiking, only uphill. It's a real thrill once you get to the top. Hey, could I go? I mean... Well, I got my own gear and everything. Sure. Why not? We got lots of room in the van. We always get too much food. We'd love to have you, James. Oh, great. I'll get my stuff after dinner and... Hey, wait a minute. Nobody said you could go yet. 
Are you afraid we'd be a bad influence on James? No, I'm not, Kathy. James can go if you have him back here early Sunday evening. Thanks, Dad. Well, as long as James is going with you, it seems silly for you to drive somewhere and camp out tonight. Why don't you stay here and get an early start in the morning? As long as you're sure it's not inconvenient, Mrs. Hunter. We have to be up at 5 in the morning. No, it's settled. You're staying. Wow, more exciting. Calm down, Sandy. I think I'll make myself a drink. Would you like a drink? No, no, I'm cooking. Would you like a drink, Jen? Oh, uh, thank you, sir. Please don't call me sir. It makes me feel like I could buy Mr. Chips. You're as close to my age as you are to Kathy's, you know? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Hunter. Paul. Paul. I don't see what anyone's age has to do with anything. Why are you being so defensive, Kathy? Well, you're the one that's being so... something. I'll make us a drink. I'm not even hungry. It's okay, Kathy. Everything's fine. I'd say the room is fraught with tension. Listen, it, it, relax, everybody. It's, everything's okay. It's going to work out fine. Just relax and, and smile. That was terrific, Mrs. Hunter. You've raised the level of tuna casserole to gourmet fare. You have to say that because you want to get in good with the family. Shut up, Sandy. Well, it's true. I mean, a tuna casserole is a tuna casserole, just like uh, meatloaf is meatloaf and macaroni and cheese is macaroni and cheese. I suppose you like to eat steak every night, huh, Sandy? No, I like to have something really different. Like uh, if Kathy had gone to Africa and brought back some really terrific recipes, never eaten by Americans before. Well, I may still go, Sandy. I didn't refuse a scholarship. I just asked for a postponement. And if I do go, I promise to bring you back some terrific recipe. Let's face it, Kathy. I don't think you're ever going to make that trip now. Well, that's not true, Dad. I mean, when Jed and I have a little more time and experience behind us, I'll feel ready to take that kind of opportunity. I mean, even if we were married and I had a chance to do something that meant we'd be apart for a while, I wouldn't give it up just to be with Jed all the time. And I wouldn't want to hold her back. Well, so you take off for a year or so and expect to find Jed waiting for you when you get home, huh? Well, why not? Men do. They go off to war. They go to sea. They go on scientific expeditions and government missions. Women wait for them. Why shouldn't men wait for women? Right. I mean, when I'm playing pros, I'm not going to be able to take my husband on all my trips. I'll have to stay home and wait. Of course, you can always turn on the TV and watch my instant replay, so he won't get lonely. He'll probably be glad when you have a road trip. You know what? I feel like I've been dropped into the wrong century. Oh, listen, I bet when Dad knows Judd a little better, he won't be so mad. Must be kind of difficult waiting for Kathy to decide uh, if and when you're going to get married. Actually, as much as I love Kathy and want her to be my wife, I understand how she feels. Oh, you do? Yes. I've been in love with a woman, yet not felt emotionally ready for marriage. Thankfully, on those occasions. On those occasions? How many women have you been involved with, Judd? Kath, what if, before you ever get married, you and Judd, you fall out of love with each other? Well, that's hard to imagine. But I suppose, eventually, I'd meet someone else. And if that didn't last, you'd meet someone else? You're asking if I might not end up going from one man to another? Well, it could happen, couldn't it? You know, you make it sound as though I put notches on my rifle. I hope that Kathy isn't just another notch on your rifle. Of course not. The fact is, I'm 30 years old. I've had affairs with other women before I met Kathy. Did you expect me to be a virgin? I don't know what to expect anymore. Well, as usual, James and I have done an expert job on the dishes. Yeah, and I'm beat. I'm going to go hit the sack so I'll be in shape for tomorrow. Well, that's a good idea, considering we have to get up at dawn. I'll get our things from the van. Well, I think a roll away for Judd and James's room. Well, what are you talking about? Aren't Judd and I going to sleep in my room? There's no reason to beat around the bush, Joan. Your mother and I do not want you and Judd to sleep together in this house. I don't believe it. Listen, it's cool, Kath. It's... Even though you know that we sleep together every night at Judd's? And when we 
we come here, we have to pretend. You don't have to pretend anything. You just sleep in your room, and Judd can sleep in James's room. I've never heard of anything so ridiculous. Not ridiculous, Kathy. It's consideration for other people. You and Judd can do anything you want at Judd's apartment. That's up to you. It's strictly your business. But what goes on here in this house just has to be what your mother and I feel is best for everyone concerned. Maybe he's right, Kath. After all, Judd is a guest in our house. Oh, well, thanks for informing me. Obviously, I'm a guest here, too. No, you're not. You're still just as much a part of this family as anyone else. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll just go up to my little girl's room and have sweet little dreams of sugar plum. Everything's all messed up. Nobody knows who goes where anymore. Everybody's mad at each other. I hate it and all of you and everything. I shouldn't have come home. I'm making everyone miserable and messing up the whole family. And maybe you shouldn't come camping with us, James. Maybe I'll mess you up, too. That's crazy, Kathy. Listen, I wish we could all go camping with you to, to show we still love you and, and we're still one big happy family. Huh? You didn't get much sleep, did you? No. I saw them off. How was Kathy? A little red around the eyes. You lost her? Well, I think we lost that little girl in the taffeta party dress a lot longer ago than we'd like to admit. I know that. What about the liberated young woman? Have we lost her, too? I guess we just have to get to know her the way James is doing. James? My gosh, you know, in four years, he'll be Kathy's age, 19. In four years, I'll be 16. You had to remind us, didn't you? I'm sorry I yelled at everyone. It's all right. We're all sorry we were yelling. It means we love each other. And we love Kathy very much, you know? Even though she's cohabiting out of wedlock with that benefit of clergy? Yes. We'll always love Kathy and you and James, no matter what. Good. Are we going to have breakfast? Yeah, well, I've been doing some research on it, and, well, opinions are mixed, but a lot of people think marriage is obsolete now. Well, I, for one, hope they're wrong. And I'd sure hate to finally convince Kathy to marry me, only to find out the whole thing went out of style. Somehow, I don't think we have to worry. But I thought you guys would be happy to find out marriage was obsolete, and they'd stop hassling you. I didn't mean it to sound like that, James. I'm not against marriage. I just want it to be a decision I make, not just a foregone conclusion, a result of social pressure. So you guys believe in the nuclear family? Well, if that's the kind with the mother, the father, and kids, I sure do. People who put down the family are just as narrow-minded as people who think that's the way everybody should live. I'd like for people to have choices and respect each other's choices. That seems fair. Having choices is risky, though. You can easily make the wrong one but sometimes it's very clear-cut. Like right now, if we don't all choose to get some rest, we're gonna feel rotten tomorrow. Yeah, why don't I move my tent down a little ways from yours? Why? You and Kathy probably like a little privacy. Listen, it's such a beautiful night, why don't we all get our sleeping bags out and sleep by the fire, under the stars? Okay, that's a terrific idea. Oh, this sure beats being cooped up in a tent. Regular light show up there. I can see the Big Dipper and Orion's belt. Good night, Judd. Good night, Kathy. Good night, James. Sweet dreams. Oh, you too. Everybody. Hello, hello. Hi. Did you have a good time? Oh, yeah, it was really the greatest. Can you and Judd stay for coffee? Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. We both honestly have to get back. We have a lot of work to do for Monday. I just wanted to stop in and say goodbye. I hope we'll be seeing you before too long, Kathy. Oh, that's up to you, Dad. I want to see you both, but I don't want to have to argue about the way I'm living or feel ashamed of it. I love Judd, and I believe in what I'm doing. Well, I had a speech all prepared. You'd have liked it. Oh, why don't you say it, Dad? I can't. Paul, I thought that you decided. I know, I decided. 
I decided, Kathy, that you have a perfect right to live your life just any way you want to, and I would accept the fact that you're living with a guy, even though you're not married to him. But I find that very difficult to accept. I mean, I can accept it in my mind or my intellect or wherever, but not where it really counts in my heart. Well, it isn't just anyone, Dad. It's Kathy. I know that, James. That's what makes it so difficult. Even if you don't approve, Dad, don't be mad at her. I'm not mad at her. I'm mad at myself. I could get a thing all sorted out in my mind, and then I just can't feel it. I know you tried. I love you very much. And I find it very difficult to lose you. I love you too, Dad. I love all of you. And I love Judd too. Hey. Come and see us. I'll be there. See you, Kath. Well, I'm certainly proud of your sister, James. Taking a stand against outmoded traditional mores and old-fashioned hang-ups. Don't worry, blood. A, a glass chick like Kathy would come around and see the light, marry the dude, and live happy ever after. Well, whatever she does, she can't please everybody. Not even the three of us. Well, which way do you want her to go, James? Look, old or mod? Neither. Or either. Well, what you pulling for then, man? For Kathy. <laughs> but she's not a philosophy, James. She's just one person. Yeah, I know. That's what I like about her. <laughs> 